Greetings, my name is Neil Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of A Light in the Dark. Now in the last episode, I started unlocking the different ends. Unrocking? Unrocking! I started unrocking the, the different endings, besides the one I got on my uh, first run of the game. And both of them resulted in me uh, dying. The first of which, me dying due to the sickness I acquired around day three. You brought pretty much because I was acting like a massive jerk to uh, the two siblings here, who up to the point where they decided to just leave me to my own devices, and well, I ended up kicking the bucket. The second time was me attempting to escape during one was uh, during one brief moment where I actually could, when it was just me and the little sis and me and the little sister all by herself ourselves, and well. I, my character didn't exact, I didn't, neither me nor our, our character exactly think that situation out through in that instance as well as we should have, because we ended up getting stabbed, and, well, we bled to death. So, yeah. So the lesson here for that you could acquire from those two endings is number one. Don't be a oh, don't go out your way to be a big jerk to your kidnappers. And number two, think a little, think a bit more about your escape plan. Otherwise, you will get shivved in the back like the dumb moron that you are. So this may be the finale of this series because I think there's only two more endings left that I have to go through. One being another, one being another, uh, one, another ending where um, I want. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I actually don't know. Why, why am I talking like I know what the other endings are going to involve? I freaking don't. So, whatever. I'll. I'll I'm just going to keep uh, playing again like I did in the last episode until eventually something new occurs, and then maybe. I'll see a different ending. Hopefully, one of these endings will be an ending that is more satisfying than the fun than the the one I got, the first one I got. But time will tell, I suppose. So, see you guys soon. Okay, I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can escape at a later time than the the ending I got towards the end of the last episode. But rather than keep pulling on the rope here, one of the things I'm gonna do differently. It's just give up. There's no point to risk this much. They might just let me go after the night. Okay. Doesn't look like there's any new dialogue, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna try to see if I can escape at a later point and see if maybe that will lead to a different ending. Wish me luck! Who is Miss Wang? Ooh. Ignoring the fact that the little girl's right next to her, she gave me a solid kick. Don't get cocky. I told you to shut up. Why you? The little girl looked at me worriedly, but was too scared to ask anything. Um Eling, I think you should you should be behind. Your, your older sister, not in front of her. Probably a glitch, if I had to guess. Whatever, might be for the best. Okay, this looks the same. And the swing you just mentioned. Okay, shut her mouth. She's your family, right? If she was the culprit, she wouldn't have asked her to rest, nor brought them food. Family. Hmm. She mumbled my words, but, fi but finally nodded affirmatively. If Miss Wang didn't help us, we wouldn't even have a place to live, or people hiring us. Outside Big Sis, Miss Wang is the only one helping us. And yet, and yet, 
despite this help that you are apparently getting. You choose to kidnap this poor son of a bitch anyway. I don't know, seems like a pretty poor way to repay Miss Wang. I mean, I under I mean, I sympathize with your plight and all, but still. I mean, how how much does she provide for you, honestly? Is what I want to know. Cuz I don't want to be too harsh about this or be harsh at all where it isn't due. Deep in her memory, she quietly recalled recalled of her lowered head. I remember she said the bread were leftovers, which means they're either from a bakery or a shopping mall. If it was a shopping mall, then it would probably have also have bentos and drinks. In other words, they used to work in a bakery. Hmm, so it would seem. Tons of shattered glass on the floor. I might get hurt if I'm not careful. I've tried playing with shattered glass before. Okay, wait. Here we go, something new. With this, I could escape. Oh yeah, let's cut the rope. I tried to suppress the excitement in my heart and carefully picked up a sharp looking glass shard. I rubbed the shard, the shard against the rope. Due to my illness, they had loosened the rope, allowing my wrists to move a little. Come on, come on. Hearing my prayer, the cut mark on the rope became visible. Yes, this would work. Encouraged by the progress, I ignored the pain of holding the sharp glass and sped up. The cut got wider and wider. Then it was done. Feeling the newfound freedom in my hands, I awkwardly tried to move them. The blood dripping from my palm made me realize my hands were bleeding from the effort. Hey, are you done yet? Don't test my patience. I'm gonna feel like a dick for this later. I know I am. Pretty cause I wouldn't be surprised at all if this escape attempt ends badly for somebody. Almost, almost done. The sudden yelling almost made me scream, but I managed to respond calmly and realize I ignored something important. I cut the rope without a second thought and didn't think of a plan to explain my action to them. My only choice was to run. There were two of them and they had weapons. This was dangerous. Was there any other choice? If I couldn't convince them, I might as well give it a shot. I made up my mind and cut through the rope around my feet. I took a deep breath and felt the rapid beating in my heart. It was now or never. I started running as soon as I opened the door. Run right in front of me was a little girl with a shocked expression. Uh, run for the exit! I pushed away the little girl and heard her scream, which alarmed her sister. Not expecting me to get out of the rope, she couldn't react immediately. Uh, force through! Jumping out of the window would be a bad idea. I'd die. It was too high to jump from there. I had to break through. I tried to dash forward and instead stumbled, almost crashing into the wardrobe. I found my balance again by having my hand against the floor. The adrenaline sharpened all my senses. Why you? In a panic, the girl raised her arm, and I could see the blade grasp within her hand. Driven by the urge to escape, I saw the, sil the silver flash before me. I moved before I could think. I grabbed her arm and pushed her against the wall. I felt warmth in my hand. Her chest was instantly dyed in bright red. Like a blooming rose. Oh. Everything happened so quickly that I couldn't do anything but stare at the knife in my hand, unsure what just happened. I think you stabbed her. I looked into her eyes and saw an expression of shock, disbelief, and fear. Big Sis! 
The sad scream of the little girl brought me back to my senses. The knife dropped to the floor with a vivid clank. My mind was a mess, and even the sight before me started to get blurry. Run. Run! Run! The only thought in my mind made me move. I staggered toward the door. Don't go! I turned my head around in reflex toward the panicked scream behind me. She was holding her sister in her arms, with her head rested on her knees powerlessly. Tears were dripping down her cheeks. The girl's face was pale. She tried to apply pressure to the wound in her sister's chest, but couldn't stop the bleeding. Her forehead was soaked with cold sweat. The crimson expanded through her clothes, symbolizing her fading life. I just stood there, petrified. The sensation of stabbing her with the knife was nauseating. Big sis! Big sis! She started to cry helplessly and could only call her name again and again, as though trying to anchor her to the world of the living. For a brief moment, our gazes met. There were marks of blood and tears on her face, but all I could notice were her eyes. All I could see was the message through those eyes while everything, everything else simply faded away. Save her. There were no words, but the voice stabbed through my chest nonetheless. There, th that was more a command than a plea. Save her. An inexplicable fear took over my mind and rendered me breathless. Those eyes were like an accusation against my crime. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong! Unable to hold back the fear in my chest any longer, I roared at her like a madman. Yet she just stared at me without any reaction. As though to escape from that gaze, I ran out without turning back. It's been half a year since the kidnapping incident. So, I managed to get out. I had forgotten how far and long I had run after I escaped. I can only remember how the rain beat down on my body and how much pain my body was in, and how I woke up in a hospital. The police found the criminal quickly, but she had died on the way to the hospital. They said the little girl just hugged her sister motionlessly next to the door. She didn't respond to any questions and was diagnosed with PTSD. She probably got sent to some social welfare facility, and I never heard anything about her after that. I am so fucking sorry, Eling. The case became a hot topic on the news for a while. Criticism against the government and conspiracy theories were everywhere. However, after failing to find the accomplice, the case made no progress and got closed. Even after all these events, the world kept turning. The increase in economic inequality, global warming, and the endless religious conflict. There were still people who struggled at the bottom and those that enjoyed everything on the top. The world was unfair, as always. Something did change, though. I started to have a problem facing the opposite gender. I can't help but remember those days when I met their gaze. I don't regret my decision. We strive for survival, and I only lived because I won. It was just that. I could still see her expression in my mind constantly. Like a curse. Please save her. As if bound to my body, they followed me like a shadow, reminding me of the other choices I could have made.
Achievement unlocked. Inedible mark. I told... Yeah, I knew I was going to feel like a dick. Somehow. Something bad was going to happen, and I was right. I ended up murdering Big Sis, and I ended up le leaving e Ling with PTSD. And, well... How Shen here is obviously traumatized in his own way. No matter what he tries to tell himself. Not exactly a good ending by any stretch of the imagination. Alright. On to the next one. Actually, on second thought, I want to see what happens when I select any of the other options, so I'm going to do that real fast. Let's uh, cut the rope. Come on. Okay, I'm sorry, Ling. Driven by impulse, I raised the glass to stab her. Don't move! Should I do it? Her innocent face was filled with fear and panic. Thinking of the interactions we had during the past few days, I hesitated. And hesitation could be fatal. Something bumped into me and made me lose my balance. The girl pushed me against the wall. Wait! WAIT! You bastard. I even thought you might cooperate. Oh. The sensation of my body resisting the knife and the pain of torn muscle engulfed me. Just die! Die, 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 die! Showing no hesitation, she stabbed me again. The repeated mumbling sounded like a curse that gradually removed the pain from my body. I could still feel the blood leaving me and the nasty wounds but they also felt like sensations belonging to someone else. Before my consciousness faded, I could only see her twisted face through vision reddened by blood. Okay, next! Exit. Okay. Jump out the window, like a madman. Seeing as how someone was blocking the door, I made the call to run for the window. A building like this wouldn't be too tall, and I could just... SHIT! I realized I was on the third and fourth floor of this building. Jumping from this height would be a problem. And hesitation could be fatal. Okay. This is looking like it's ex gonna be exactly the same. Yeah, I think it's gonna be exactly the same. So in the end, no money. What are you trying to say? I want to say he doesn't give a crap about me. Better do your research next time you try kidnapping. The long wait led to this result. I could only laugh bitterly. That's not even funny. It's disgusting to become someone this heartless due to money. Well... He's a famous CEO featured in a magazine and admired by many, though. And that's why I say they're fucked up. She grunted next to the wall, looking at me with an expression of sympathy. I say you stay away from folks like that, or you might end up like them. Like them, huh? Without noticing herself, she spoke of me as one of us instead of one of them. Indeed. Who knows, maybe getting kidnapped was not such a bad thing. Probably not. Standing from this wall of darkness, there's no sky, yeah, yeah, yeah. This all looks the same. I woke up from the nightmare and saw the same small room. I still had escaped from this nightmare called reality. I somehow fell asleep and it was nighttime already. My body hadn't gotten any better. My injuries were swollen and burning like fire. The soaking wet cloth on my body made me tremble. Lack of sleep and malnutrition rendered my body powerless. 
I could feel the fever from my fluctuating body temperature. I heard footsteps and raised my head. The girl looked down on me. There was no warmth in her eyes. Where is your sister? I let her go first. You spare the her the gore? She snored upon hearing my joke, clearly not appreciating the way I talked. So you'll kill me now. Letting go the roundabout approach, I cut right to the chase. Either will kill me or let me go. I didn't care which. I suddenly realized how ironic it was when we talked about communication and mutual understanding. But in this situation, we finally let go of the pretentiousness and expressed our true selves. I won't kill you. Or save you. It's up to you to escape from here. Okay, this is different. Just like you don't care about us, I don't care about you. Hearing her determined tone, I remembered the only thought in my mind these past few days. I don't care what they think, I'm getting out of here. So we were the same. Even up to these sorts of selfish aspects. You can hate me or blame me. I don't care. Misinterpreting my smile, her look was not one of disgust, but coldness. Okay, so what I've been doing differently was I just basically tried to cooperate with them the best I could, but I didn't I don't I didn't really go out of my way to observe my environment all that much. Just to see if what would happen. Because clearly I have to investigate some ob objects within the environment or influence the ending in some way. And it looks like as though it's paying off, finally. I've been at this for uh, quite a while now. It would be very nice if this is indeed another ending. I was too tired to argue, so I just shook my head. We fell silent. After looking at my weak posture, she said, No one helped us when we were hungry. I know. Realizing what she wanted to say, I finished the sentence for her. No one takes responsibility for your life, nor should you with mine. Because the world isn't fair, right? That's right. She nodded and picked up my backpack. She then left without turning back. Her footsteps echoed through the hot stairwell and eventually faded in the rain. There was no one but me in the room. <laughs> I struggled towards the desk. Even the few steps I made exhausted everything I had left. I basically collapsed on top of the chair. My reopened wounds started to bleed again. I didn't even have the energy to grab the knife. Panning next to the window, I couldn't clearly see what was outside of it. There was only the gray sky and the rain. I remembered how she smoked next to the window and seemed to try to find something out there. What did she actually see then? An escape, man. I closed my eyes out of exhaustion. If only. If only I had one more chance. Could we let go of our bias and reach a different outcome? With a light sigh, I let the rain engulf the last of my consciousness. Why in the dark ending too? Endless rain. Hell yeah, another ending. Boy, meant endings one through five. Is that really everything that's left? Oh, come on.
Don't let ending one be the one ending that's the one true ending. I gotta look some. I gotta look something. I gotta look the endings up here. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. If there's any details on how to reach it, then I'll try to avoid looking at them. I'm just gonna look for a guide or something here that just lists the different endings. So hold on a sec. Yeah, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. There's one more ending I have left to get. Just one more. I uh, looked up an English walkthrough on it on Steam, and yeah, it's called Ending Zero. Now, what I need to do to unlock it, I don't know. I didn't look, so I'm probably so. For all I know, I may need to just restart this whole freaking thing, and just do just do everything I can here at the right opportunity to just uh, influence things in the right direction and hope for the best that and that it'll get me to this ending. Just make all the right decisions all the way through. I hope I don't have to do that. Like maybe one of the save files I got here will be a good enough will be enough of a starting point for me to work with. But I probably really would honestly be best for me to just start over. So that way I can be sure, so that way if I have to do everything a certain way right from the get-go, I won't just end up wasting my time here just trying to uh, influence things at starting points where it's just too late for me to do anything by then, so... Fuck it. Okay. I'm... We're gonna shoot for this last ending, and then we're gonna call this series officially over. So... Wish me luck, guys, and hope that it won't it won't be uh, I'll it won't cause it won't be too much trouble for me to uh, get to this last end ending although given everything that I've uh, had to do to unlock all the other endings so far I think I generally have a pretty good idea on what I need to do I need to be cooperative with the sisters as best I can and I got to try to observe all the right items within the environment at keep at uh, the right opportunities throughout each day leading up all the way to uh, I guess day seven so basically whenever there's a new item that uh, shows up in the environment that look that I know looks important that I know from memory is important or anything that looks important that I'm, or anything that looks important like that anything like that I should observe it as soon as it pops up. All the while just uh, chatting with the sisters and just choosing the right di dialogue options. I, so, I have a game plan I can work with, so... If I screw up somewhere on the, along the way, I probably won't really need to... I probably will only need to make a correction only a, a few times here and there. At least... Or maybe I just need to be the biggest dick at the right opportunity to the sisters in order to just get this ending. I have no freaking clue, but considering that uh, considering that basically cooperating with them is the one thing that got me as far as the last few days, five, six, and seven, I'm pretty reasonably sure that cooperation and observation is the key strategy here. One way or the other, I'm going to find out if I'm on the money soon enough. So I'm just going to just shut up here and get started on this thing. So see you all soon. Date stopped at August 30th, 1999. If it is the date the original owner left the place, then it must be at least 15 years old. No wonder it looks this miserable. Rather, is a kind of miracle for this place even to still be standing after so many years without any sorts of maintenance. I don't think I've even examined this thing yet. The yellow, the yellowing paper reveals a sign of age. Seems to be a popular video game from the past. This is probably, this is probably one option I shouldn't choose, but well. I gotta make sure I examine that damn poster at least once and throughout this whole damn Let's Play, right? That isn't really plausible. Wait a minute. That got me a note update? For real? 
Okay. Uh, the video game poster on the wall had turned yellow. Was the former resident a video game nerd? How is this in any way relevant to what's going on here? This is different. Bring out some white smoke. I sighed lightly. Many thoughts came to my mind and they mixed into words. Just surrender. Her body shook. She raised her head vacantly. Please tell me I'm... Please tell me all my searching's finally paying off. Fingers crossed. Even if you paid off the debt, your dream will never come true. We were born with too many stigmas. Gender, race, looks, family. They won't disappear just because you move somewhere else. Wait, this looks the same, though. I don't know what they... Oh. Education, experience, relationship, work, and even death. People will judge you through these glances no matter what. I don't know how much they, how much money you owe them, nor what they told you, but there must be a way. All you can do is accept who you are and move on. They should apply for bankruptcy if they are the do if they are the debtors, and ask for protection from the police if they are threatened with violence. There must be a way. If someone who knows the law do and doesn't care about compensation could help them. Are you telling me that? Her eyes were reddened, and she asked me like a lost child. I stumbled. Apparently I just said all these things without thinking. Why did I tell her all this? Probably because you want to help her, like I do? Because you and I... We aren't that different. I'm just luckier than you. We never thought of ourselves as the bad guys from a children's story. We all wanted a happy life like the prince and princess of the story. Depends on the fairy tale, man. I've read some actual uh, old fairy tales in my time, and some of them... A lot of them don't have ha exactly happy endings. Some of them can actually be a bit gruesome when you think about it. She's not a heartless criminal that takes pleasure from committing crimes. Anyone might make the same decision in that situation. Especially when you don't have the choice. Is that so? She didn't answer the, my question, but something was decided. You were so weird. She chuckled lightly. The traces of tears didn't dry up, but there was warmth in that expression. Seeing that smile, I became more certain of it. Regardless of our upbringing, race, and gender, we all have things we fear, worry about, and pursue. We aren't different. And that is why you should all make love and go eat some cake. Make love, not war. Um... Excuse me for one second. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, needed to go check on something. Okay, now let's just get this out of the way. Um, sleeping pills, I should probably examine that. Sleeping pills. Why'd you, why'd you buy so many sleeping pills? Yeah, yeah, this is all the same. Um, look out the window. She keeps looking outside. What exactly she is looking at? Um, curtains. The ink green curtains covered in thick dust. Most likely I've been washed for some time. If there is a need to conceal why doesn't mean there's someone else nearby. Come 
on. Give me something. Simple wooden chair, unpolished just like the desk. It is quite rough, as though it was actually made by hand. I'm not sure how old this chair is, but I can almost smell its level of decay. With the passage of time, the two of us fell silent. Okay, this is the same dialogue. Come on. I... Hello. This is definitely new, too. You really aren't scared. I don't think you'd really... Okay, you're... This is in response to the are you gonna kill me thing. I don't think you'd really do it. Is that so? I couldn't even be a good kidnapper. What a shame. She cut through the rope around my legs. After finally receiving freedom after all these days, I found the sensation extremely unfamiliar. I eagerly tried to move my legs. There were bruises where the rope used to be, as though they weren't part of my own body. I stood up while supporting myself against the wall. Finally looking at her from eye level, I realized she wasn't actually that tall. She still pointed a knife at me. The dim lamplight lit her exhausted yet determined face. If... If you really feel there is no difference, then please help them. As you said, they are just unlucky. They. Her choice of word got my attention. Why not us? And one more thing. You better not still be thinking about killing yourself. She hesitated briefly before opening her mouth. Mr. Ken is the one your mother had an affair with. I think you mentioned that name once before, didn't you? He's the one who told me your information. Well. Well, 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 well. It looks like I was half right, after all. I wasn't right about the one the parents being the ones who are who are masterminding this crime, but rather someone associated directly with one of his parents. In this case, it is uh, his mother. It is his mother's uh, boyfriend, Mr. Ken. So yeah, I was half right. Wait. Are you saying? Apparently she liked to cry about her family every time she got drunk. Probably never thought of this outcome at all. The sudden inflow information rendered me speechless. She kicked my backpack to my feet. What what does it say? Um, so Mr. Ken was the one behind all of this. And he was also the person my mother had an affair with. The sun flow information rendered me speechless. She kicked my backpack to my feet. Wait, so what does that say? The sun of info. Okay. That's all. Take your stuff and get out. Follow the road and you will find houses in ten minutes. What about you? None of your business. I have something else to do. Like killing yourself? Oh my god, he fucking gets it! How did... Simple words, yet effective. She stared at me dumbfounded not knowing how I saw through her secret plan. So that's what her decision was. She didn't get the money, yet chose to let me go. She also didn't try to run. Knowing her past, I could only guess what the medicine on the desk was for. 
And so what? Are you trying to talk me out of it? Recovered from the shock, she started to laugh hysterically while twirling her hair. I'm done with this. I can only restart everything by doing that. Poverty was like a bottomless pit that they could never get out of. I'm afraid of seeing myself having the same exact life for the next few years, or decades, or, or till death. She might have made this decision after seeing that future. I... Save it. If you want to help me, then shut up and get the hell out ASAP. I wanted to save her but didn't know what to do. In this capitalistic society where everything was decided by natural probability, I learned how powerless I was. The world isn't fair. I murmured the same words, now finally with an answer to that statement. We can't make everyone equal. There would always be differences in our intelligence and capability as genes dictated. Therefore, all the more reason for us to find a way to fix it. The world might be a machine, but we are more than just its screws. We can change how it operates. If the machine is broken, we should try to fit enough. Let me at least pick how to go. Her smile was tired, but determined. I tried to retort, but the words stuck in my throat. If someone had nothing but left but their choice of death, what right did we have to stop her? If... If you mean what you said, then prove it to me. I will prove it to you, that all this can be changed. So, would you believe in me? She stared at me silently with no answer. Too much disappointment had forced her to grow beyond a child believing blindly in fairy tales. My decision wouldn't help her at all. The debt was still there, and so was the legal prosecution. She still had to face them all, and I could offer all I could offer was a promise. Here. She gave me a piece of paper before I left. Please take care of Ling for me. She told me quietly. Hey, don't dump your troubles on me. Shut up. Bye. Realizing staying here won't, wouldn't change anything, I picked up my backpack. The weight of it felt a little surreal. Oh, come on! Will we ever meet again? I asked before I left. If she's gonna off herself, then obviously not! She paused and started chuckling. Nope. With a deep breath, I pushed open the door and walked into the rain without looking back. God damn it! Don't let it end this way. Don't let it end this way again. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Is that honestly it? Okay, I'm just gonna wait until after the credits, just in case there's another extra scene. Come on. Don't leave me like this, man. After all that backtracking and trial and error, I had 
you gotta, you gotta reward me somehow. Like, seriously, come on, man. I'm desperate, even for something bittersweet. Late night street was almost empty. There wasn't even a food stand due to a terminated construction project. There were only a few passengers who pulled up their collars and were eager to get home. It's been four years already, huh? Four fucking years! It was also this cold that day. I was sent to the hospital after escaping. The case was closed right after the police took my statement. The police found the girl in the abandoned apartment, but couldn't get any information from her. Oh my god, she's alive. There was no evidence of the involvement of Mr. Ken, so it was treated as a regular abduction incident and that was the end of the investigation. Perhaps this was what she wanted. I was depressed by the predictable result and could only comfort myself with that, thought, with that thought. Through the number she left me, I got in contact with Miss Wing and eventually met her quiet sister. I managed to piece their story together from Miss Wang. Due to failed investments, their father accumulated enormous amounts of debt and abandoned the family. The mother had to shoulder the family since then. But between the debt collection attempts and working, eventually she broke down and ended her life. I know this, I know all this already. Without family or a place to live, the sisters were eventually helped by their mother's co-worker, Miss Wang. Okay. Okay. So that's where you come in. Despite having a job and a place to live, they were still constantly getting harassed, which made the girl decide to take the risk. I told her many times that they could at least manage at my place, but she wouldn't listen. Hearing her words, I couldn't reply. Seeing the wrinkles on her face and the paint marks on the wall, I could guess why she made that decision. She wanted to escape from this life that was forced upon her. She wanted a life of her own that did involve others. Sorry. Cram school took longer than usual. Why are we still referring to you as young girl? Can't we just call you by your name now? I was back to my senses when I saw a girl wearing a coat walking towards me. Her voice still sounded a little childlike, but the sister had grown up for sure. Knowing of the death of her big sister, she chose to seclude herself. Oh, she did die after all? I thought that, that the girl in the apartment that they found was her. But I guess it must have been you instead? Fuck. She didn't cry nor speak, but only sat in her room quietly. I couldn't really take her sister's place. So all I could do was accompany her till she sorted it all out herself. Eventually, she opened her mouth, but grew much quieter than before, and was even more afraid of socializing. Perhaps in an attempt to follow her sister, she grew her hair out as well, which was now spre spreading in the wind. No problem. How's life? It's okay. I am preparing for the exams. With the help of the social welfare department, she returned to school 
and used her off time to make some money with handicrafts. She was behind others of the same age, but she was catching up to society. You? Busy as always. If only there were f if only there were 48 hours in a day. My life had grown busy thanks to the promise I made. I took courses on social welfare and participated in volunteer work. I started to witness the darkest corners of the society and the difficulty behind changing them. I even asked myself if I could really change anything. Thankfully, I always managed to keep moving forward after meeting her. Hey, I still got notes. She became afraid of people after the tragedy. All I could do was be with her till she could finally move on to face this broken world, no matter the time or obstacles. Nothing was changed? I don't think so. At least I could support her to move on and change her life. The world might be unfair. All these dark corners make us feel powerless against it. We can't even give a, a hand to others when we're occupied with our own lives. However, if we face the problem, there must be something we can do. Let's go home. Putting, on the scar putting the scarf on the girl, I spoke to her softly. The moon was high in the sky, guarding our safe return. It might be wavery, it might be dim, yet it guide people's direction all the same. That's right. Like a light in the dark. Title drop. Ending zero, a light in the dark. Achievement unlocked, a gleaming in the dark. Achievement unlocked, a light in the dark. I got everything. <sighs> Damn it all. I was hoping to save the older sister too, but... There really was no... I guess there really was no way out for her in the end, was there? She made up her mind, and life's circumstances just put her into a corner that she couldn't crawl out of. But at least her sister was able to, so... I mean, I'm glad that, at the very least, it looks like both Hao Shen and Elin could probably move on with their lives. But son of a bitch, man. short but rather interesting tale this was I guess the only criticism I have for this game is that there's really no in way to really tell when it's best to examine certain items within the environment or even and even a couple of the dialogue options which look which look at a glance, like as though they would obviously upset your kidnappers, are the uh, are indeed some apparently the right decisions that you right choices that just, choices that you had to make. If I could just speak, 
And it just almost, in some respects, almost felt like a guessing game. Where the game would punish you for making what would otherwise be a common sense decision. And in the, in the, not only in the, the given situation of you being kidnapped, but even given the context of what you learn of both the sisters up until various points in the story. And yet, sometimes you gotta make decisions here that just seemed like it'd be a bad idea to choose, especially once you get to know them, and yet... Well, yeah, thankfully, most of the, But thankfully, most of the time, that it seems like as though I had to... I was able to just make decisions here that made sense, given the context of everything, but... So the ones that weren't, like... I don't know, like, for example, just trying to ask a Ling ab about her sister, about her whereabouts or something, in a way, and just then asking her, do you believe everything that you tell her? And such, it, it, looked, it sounded like it was being asked in such a way to where it was like, like I was trying to manipulate her into being suspicious of her own sister, and yet... Apparently, I guess, it's a decision I have to make. After all the trial and error I had to do, I was able, basically, just to get all these endings, I was basically able to deduce at least that much from that decision, at least. And I know this is just one example that I'm only giving you here that I can recall off the top of my head. Uh, crap, this, what was another one? Oh yeah, I guess every single time that I decide to... Every single time I've acted sassy with the older with the uh, older girl in a way that just apparently d wouldn't result that didn't result in a bad end or something it's just yeah bottom line I just, I just don't think that some of the decisions along with some of the items that you had to examine in different parts of the story didn't exactly make sense I still never found out, for example, what the hell was the deal with that game poster. Like, okay. So the former uh, resident in that apartment I was being held in here might have been a gamer at one point. What relevance did that have with anything that was going on? As it turned out, absolutely fucking nothing. And yet I got a note from that anyway. So... That and some of the dialogue and some of the different ending paths here, especially towards the end, started to show more and more grammatical errors. So, translation of this story from uh, whatever the original language was. I think this is a Korean game. From Korean to English wasn't exactly perfect. But it was still good enough to where I could at least understand generally what was being said. And in most, in most cases, the... Uh, the English dialogue was still pretty, uh, was still very understandable. No real, no real noticeable errors in grammar or anything like that at all, for the most part. So it was overall a, a very decent translation, from what I can, t from what I can gather. Not that I can read, uh, not that I could uh, re read, read. Uh, I don't think it's called Coronese or something. It sounds dumb and it doesn't sound right either. But whatever the the name of the na of the original language is, I'm not fluent in that, so I couldn't really tell you for sure one way or the other if it was a, a good translation or not. But yeah, beyond these my beyond these minor nitpicks of mine. I thought that, despite short length, this was a pretty good story. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was intense. It was intense during uh, my first run when I didn't know what was going to happen, no matter what I chose. And once I got to know the characters in a little bit, I r really started to uh, like them all. And I'm glad in the at the end of everything here, I was able to get at least a bittersweet ending with Yiling and Hao Shen, but I'm still sad about not being able to save the older sister, no matter, no matter what I do. No matter what, 
She's either she's destined to die, basically. Or in the case of one ending, where uh, I ended up dying instead, where two ending, one ending, where I, except for the endings where I ended up getting killed instead, maybe being arrested or something. I have no fucking clue, but it's just there's no happy ending for her at all, really. Either way, this was a pretty interesting experience overall, and I definitely don't regret purchasing the game. Although, whether or not it justifies its full price tag of, what, $15? For just a base game, not including the uh, extra content like a, uh, the soundtrack, art book, and I guess prologue manga? Not counting that stuff, I don't think it's necessarily worth that price tag. So, I would recommend just getting this game this game on when it's on sale or something if you're going to buy it. But actually I don't think there's anything else I really need to say. There's no but. No magical but in the sky. None whatsoever. Nothing to see here. Move on. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much everything then. This has been a light in the dark. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and just end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you did and you want to see more content from me, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all in the next video that I make.